So it looked like some people back in Hasbro in 1984 decided to take a series of toys from Japan, put them together under one uh, line. It got famous in America, it got hot with a TV show and a comic book, and they gave it a movie. And what do we have? We have none other than Transformers the Movie 1986. Alright, the story takes place in the far off future of 2005. The Decepticons have overtaken Cybertron. The Autobots have two moon bases. And the Autobots are looking to go to do a run to Autobot City to get reinforcements and resources to help overtake Cybertron. Megatron finds out about this sends his people accordingly to stop this insurrection and while all that is happening we are introduced to a new monster villain a gigantic planet by the name of Unicron who wants to destroy everyone EVERYONE <clears throat> that's the premise of Transformers the movie 1986 and I just saw this at a Fathom event. I had a lot of fun. I got this poster and uh, this movie is really weird to review especially in this time. I saw it when it came out in the movie theaters in 86 and now I'm seeing it in, in 2018 which is 32 years and you can always look at this in two different ways. One, let's look at it from a critical aspect, which is what a lot of the people who saw it in 86 thought of it. The writing is complete nonsense. The story doesn't make any sense. The movie automatically assumes that you have seen the TV series, so there's no explanation. You're just thrown into this world, and without really being told who's the good guys and who the bad guys are. Uh, the music is very loud. It is very obvious from the start what this is, is, and it's a commercial to sell more toys. Um, it didn't do well critically. It was a bomb at the box office, making less that same year than the My Little Pony movie that had come out, I believe, a couple of months afterwards or before one of them. Um, so there's that. Uh, it has a huge cast of voice actors who actually did, for the more, for the best, most part, give it their all. But at the same time, you can kind of tell they didn't know what was going on. And so yeah, so I can understand critically why at the time they didn't like it but and I can understand why kids at the time didn't like it because this is a non-spoiler review for a 32 year old movie <clears throat> something happens about about more or less by the 32 minute mark in this movie all your toys are gone but in a very cynical attempt, and this is a very cynical movie, we have more toys to sell you because at the end of the day, this movie was a toy commercial. And yeah, it's a toy commercial. But it's a toy commercial that had legs. Like I saw it today in the movie theaters and Yes, it's hokey. Yes, the animation is inconsistent. The coloring is it can be bad at times. There are off-model shots. A character will look one way, i.e. The, the main protagonist of the movie. Unicron looks one way in one shot, and then the next shot, he'll, his face completely looks different. But there's so much there to grasp. I think that's one of the reasons that Transformers is a, still a viable franchise, you know, 
34 years later, it came out in 84, where a lot of its, you know, the, the its uh, cohorts, some like Thundercats, Silverhawk, G.I. Joe, fill in the blank, whatever 80s show you like, is not around anymore. Transformers has more or less been consistently around for 34 years. Um, the animation, when it's good, is good in this movie. Um, at times, yes, it does feel like a music video, but the song choices are actually pretty good. And one of the MVPs of this movie is Vincent D'Cafrio, who is, and if I said that name wrong, I'm sorry. It's late, and I have a, and have a, and I have something in my throat. Um, Vincent D'Onofrio is the one who set up the score, and he used a very synthesizer heavy, which was excellent at the time, and actually it still kind of holds up because it uses synthesizers instead of like drums, beats, horns, and whatever. So it's literally one man playing everything you more or less everything you hear in the movie and it really does carry the emotional weight especially in certain scenes and <clears throat> in especially during certain death scenes it's really well done this music the 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 other part of the music is very well done but it is a product of its time this movie is very 80s I guess metal heavy centric or hard rock centric um, songs like hunger um, uh, instruments of destruction they work in the scenes that they're in and but at times it does feel like a music video because they will go from one song to the other and then go back to the uh, instrumental music. Uh, Weird Al has a song in this movie. The first 45 minutes of this movie or probably 38 minutes is spent taking all the characters from the TV series, getting rid of them and introducing new characters, i.e. new toys for the kids to buy and going forward with that and it does bring up I know no one likes Hot Rod or Rodimus Prime but he is the only character in the whole series even if you watch season 1, 2, 4 and this movie he's the only guy who ever has a character arc for better or for worse it exists the voice casting it has Leonard Nimoy as the voice of Galvatron, Orson Welles in his last film appearance as the voice of Unicron, uh, Judd Nelson as Hot Rod slash Rodimus Prime, Robert Stack as Ultra Magnus, Eric Idle um, playing Rekgar. <clears throat> so there's a it's a huge amount of cast you can tell a lot of them don't know what they're saying but I will give them a lot of credit a lot of them do give their best for this movie and this is a movie I feel like nostalgia works for it and I don't I'm not sure why maybe because I was never an Autobot fan so when the main thing happens at the I guess end of the first act break happened I think well I was <clears throat> I was a fan of the Decepticons as you can tell from the shirt or jersey so it didn't affect me as much as it did other kids at the time um, this movie is a lot of fun in that it's kind of funny the interactions between each character one of the problems is characterization in this sh movie and in the show but there's a lot of fun to be had in the movie, whether you have uh, the new guy, Cup, who is the grizzled old veteran. You have Hot Rod, who is the young upstart. Ultra Magnus, who is the straight ahead, um, you know, soldier boy. And, you know, these are the people who are going to be replacing those other guys you used to have. 
it's very cynical in the way, but I can't help but think it's a lot of fun as well. It's never boring because there's always weird things being thrown at you between going to different worlds. This, play, this movie takes place in like five different worlds. Earth, Cybertron's moon, the junk planet, uh, what we will find out in season three as Quintessa. Um, and then the, the planet that we first start on at the beginning of the movie where we are introduced to Unicron. So it's never that weird. We have characters who are introduced who play a major part in the next season, i.e. the Quintessons. We have the change of the Dinobots from this rough, tough group of like badasses to like kind of like household pets. So, I mean, this movie is really hard to grade. If I was to grade it back in 1986 as a reviewer, I'd probably give it a 4. Animation is inconsistent. The story is complete insanity. You really have to have seen the show to understand what's going on. And uh, you can tell the voice actors have no idea what they're saying. Fast forward to now, uh, animation is still very chippy and changes from scene to scene, but it is a well told story. It is a timeless story about bearing the burdens of your former, uh, your protege and not being ready for it and just having to upset, uh, accept it. Whether you have Ultra Magnus's arc, where, you know, something happens to him and he just can't accept it. To the young punk who doesn't really want it, but has it thrust upon him and has to be pushed into the light. Um, even the bad guys have a couple of story arcs where you see the main bad guy, Megatron, go from this guy who is bloodthirsty... And he's always omnipotent and in charge to not being in charge to trying to serve his master and his ego. It's kind of hard. Plus the action scenes are very well done. Um, they're nothing like you've ever seen in the cartoon. At least season one and two. Um, either between the, the first fight at Autobot City... The last fight on uh, inside Unicron's body. It's, it's kind of this is a movie that's really hard to judge. If I was to judge it now, I'd probably give it a close to an eight because the music is really good. It yes, it is of its time, but even now, like I was listening to the touch today, and I was going, "Wow, this is a really good song. Why don't I listen to it more?" Because it is kind of easy eighties cheese which is what these type of shows were in their day and time and I think what makes Transformers a cut above the rest is the fact that it takes a little bit of everything it has 80's cheese, it has nostalgia but it kinda had a purpose above what anyone thought who was either creating it marketing it or putting it out on tour shelves like I said this is a very cynical movie in what its approach is which is to get rid of the old toys and to sell you some new toys. But in between and in the series as a whole, just to sum this up, is no one expected this to actually touch people. And that's a very interesting thing to look at in and of itself. So yeah, this review might have been all over the place, but if, I'm, if you really want to look at it, the material I'm trying to review is all over the place. I definitely would re recommend it for people who are Transformer fans now. I will pre-reference that though. What If you get confused, you kind of need to watch Season 1 and 2 of the Transformers to get a lot of the hints. But also, 
while you're watching it and you're wondering why certain characters in uh, season two aren't in this movie, you have to know that this movie was being made kind of in the middle of season two. So at a certain point, you'll stop seeing characters. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no Bruticus. There's no Stunticons, no area bots, uh, no Defensor, so things like that. So yeah, um, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you people have seen it. This uh, this movie theater I saw it in today was actually more packed than the movie theater I saw it in 1986. So. That'll tell you a lot. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Transformers, the animated movie from 1986. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Until all are one.